What? You again? You must be a glutton for a cinema cycle punishment. Because <clears throat> that's where you've landed yourself on November 25th, 2015, out here in the man cave. About what, 47 degrees outside. Not too bad, actually. It's a Wednesday, and it's also HD DVD day, the other forgotten format that is no longer available to anybody. <clears throat> Didn't last too long on the vine. But I do have a collection of these babies, and today the Random Media Generator has given me Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh yeah, can you say Johnny Depp and Tim Burton, who are remaking every single fairy tale I ever learned as a child for a new generation, and making it just a bit more surreal. <clears throat> so, bound to be entertaining. Let's eat some chocolate. So... <clears throat> Good movie, actually, so far. Tim Burton's no slouch when it comes to filmmaking. A little odd, though. But obviously, I, you know, I grew up on the original with uh, Gene Wilder. So I'm watching this, and it's actually a very close representation of the original. Yeah, they haven't changed the screenplay a lot so far, about a half hour into it. But it's obviously very dark. You know, it's very Batman-like, <laughs> very gothic, and it's all, also borders on creepy. The original was kind of creepy in a few little ways. This is really creepy in certain ways, where it's like, it's almost a horror movie, which again is typical burden. But, you know, as I watch this, the one thing that kind of springs to mind is Wonka's leading him through his magical land of a chocolate factory. This is just like Michael Jackson. You know, he created his own little fantasy world, and he lived in it, and he was kind of weird and quirky. He had a little, ch you know, chimpanzee or whatever. So it's like, maybe this is an allegory for what happens when you can have anything you want. Yeah, kind of dark, obviously. Uh, Willy Wonka is the psycho chocolate maker. Uh, I don't remember the original film having so many flashback scenes for character, character development of all the various actors. Uh... Like I say, it's a more moody piece. It's like it's like I keep expecting Batman to come out from behind a corner <laughs> or Edward Scissorhands. Okay, I, I got to admit, the Oompa Loompa choreographed dance routines, you know, like straight out of Vegas, uh, award show kind of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see where Burton's trying to update this whole concept to a younger, more hip audience who's used to a different paradigm. But, uh, you know, it loses all that kind of wonderment warm feeling and kind of overshadows it with all this techie glitzy stuff which you know Burton that's what he always does as the credits are about to roll Johnny Depp is Willy Wonka doesn't really do it for me uh, he doesn't have much charm he just comes off as a bit creepy uh, the other thing that kind of like you know it annoys me a little bit about the trip through cinema land where you get to see society kind of laid out over a very long period of time and that the current focus of films like these even Batman or anything it's popular with a lot of gimmickry to it that Hollywood likes to churn out they always have this issue of family and they're always assuming that the uh, target audience which is usually a younger person somebody under the age of 20 uh, can deal with and emotionally understand the idea of a torn family of separated parents, of the loss of a parent, of wanting to find home. It's obviously a recurring theme. I know it's always been there in cinema, the whole idea of home and hearth and of feeling uh, you know, warm and feeling needed and uh, people you can trust. But it's like everyone is kind of like, all these movies now, they obviously assume this, like you're from a broken home. So we're going to give you a fantasy about having the ideal family again, which usually never happens. So in that aspect, it's like, it's a little depressing. 